What is up guys? Hope everybody's doing good. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. So today's topic is going to be about how to troubleshoot BGW320 device. Um, it's a gateway, it's a router, whatever you want to call it. It's provided by AT&T. Seems like a lot of people have questions about it. So I wanted to kind of help do some basic troubleshooting uh, at the same time, kind of walk you through the document and how to troubleshoot, what the different status indicators are and um, what else we got. And, um, you know, problem isolation. How do you, um, for example, like what is what to do if uh, the light is not on or whatever the case is. But I'll walk you through that. And uh, I think that's going to help a lot of people who have the device and there's so many things wrong with it or whatever. So I think this video will really help you guys out. But, um, you know, let's stay tuned and we'll go through that right now. Welcome back, guys. So now we're going to be talking about how to troubleshoot the BGW320-500 broadband gateway. So this document that I'm looking at right now, it's the revision.8.7. And this is the version 1. So this is probably the most, most authentic documentation you can find on this gateway because AT&T is not going to provide you with one. Um, so let's go straight to some basic troubleshooting stacks. And I'm going to share this document right after the call. So uh, I'm going to share this document right after the video. So that way you guys have it for your future references. Um, but yeah, so so right now, if you go under chapter four, basic troubleshooting. Now this chapter provides simple troubleshooting suggestions for issues with initial configuration of the BGW320, such as like status indicators, um, rail panel connectors, factory resets, and some of, the, some of the things that you need to do before troubleshooting. Um, So status light indicators, for example, like if you look at the front of the the gateway, you'll see the service LED and the WPS LED, um, you know, and then if you look at the back, you've got the WAN port, Ethernet ports, and then you get the five gig Ethernet port. Um, and they have each of those have LEDs and each color on the LED may point you to something different. And then, of course, the power jack LED. So going down, this will be sort of like an LED indicator, right? Like conditions for LED behavior. So let's say if the service LED, WPS LED, power LED, Ethernet, and ONT LED, if they're all off at the same time, that pretty much tells you the device is not powered on. And if the power jack LED is the only one green, the rest are off, then you know it's a dead board. Um, initial power up, you know, white slow flash, and then solid green power jack LED and the rest are off, that means it's powering up. Now device is not bootable if it's showing solid red under service LED and WPS LED. During post process, solid orange will be an indicator for, you know, that it's a post process right now. It's still, you know, um, nothing wrong with the gateway. It normally lasts like four to five seconds. So, so it's pretty much saying that there's no bro broadband and operation yet. So there's no internet connection at this time. Now broadband physical detection and signal sync begins now. These are the indicators for that. So attempting upper layer network access, pretty much white flash very rapidly and then solid green on the ethernet and power jack LED. So what are some of the things that would indicate IP address failure would be you know, if it's service LED is flashing fast in red, that'll be your biggest indicator for an IP address failure. What about broadband physical detection and signal sync fails? That could be slow red flash 
on the service LED indicator. Um, so pretty much this will this is a pretty very actually not a pretty this is a very solid guideline when you're actually troubleshooting your BGW320 device. Now this is not an enterprise level gateway; it's just for home. So it doesn't get any more complicated than what they're pretty much laid out for you here, right? And there's going to be some more troubleshooting steps, which I'm going to go over right now. But these are some of the basic things that when you look at the LEDs, you know, what you should know that, okay, you know, whatever could be causing the problem on the gateway. And, you know, this goes on to the next page, right? If the device is overheated, solid red on the service LED, um, so on and so forth. So you could read through this. It's a very, very good documentation. I'm going to share the link for this documentation on the bottom so you guys could have that for your future reference. Okay, let's go down. Of course, there's some more, um, you know, indicators. Pretty much if you have these three pages of indicators, light LED indicators in front of you when you're troubleshooting, pretty much that's going to be a quick way to resolve a problem for you. So the first thing you do is just quickly look at the LED, which LED is showing what color or what phase. Like, is it showing solid red? Is it showing solid green? If Ethernet is showing solid green and service LED is showing solid red, then, you know, device is overheated. So the quickest way to troubleshoot your device would be to go through these uh, LED indicators. Now, if the status LED, if the status indicator light does not look correct for these pro possible problems, right? So, for example, the LED is not lit for the service from panel. What to do? What, what could be the possible problems, right? These are the things you want to do. So, let's say the service LED is not working, right? The, the light is not on. Check the rear panel power jack LED, which is on the left of the connector of the cord of the power adapter so the way it's written is very user friendly i guess for people who have zero clue about technology and it could really literally walk you through the troubleshooting process and then it goes further right it says if the rear pan if the real panel power jack led is on contact at t at this number if the rear panel power led is off do this Make sure the power adapter is plugged in to the gateway properly and then try a good known wall outlet. And then if a power strip is used, make sure it's switched on. So on and so forth, let's say uh, service LED in the front panel does not lights after the installation of the SFP. So after you install the SFP and the lights not on, then what do you do, right? Make sure the SFT optic module installed properly because most likely if the SFP installation is causing some sort of service LED issues, then it would be something related to the SFP module, right? Or the fiber cable. Uh, going down, Ethernet ports does not light after connecting with the Ethernet cables. So when you insert the cable, it's supposed to show a green light on the Ethernet port. But if it doesn't, what are the steps you have to do? So make sure that you are using yellow ethernet cable, right? That's like basic. So you look at the color, yellow is the authentic one. I mean, you will find different colors of ethernet as well, but most likely if your ethernet's not yellow, that's not a deal breaker, but move on to the next step. So on and so forth. Um, but yeah, so, you know, just to have a good good view of the back of the panel the, the back panel like what are the some of the ports and you know where the reset button is and everything so the red button on the back is the reset button if all else fails um you know if all of these steps fail and you know the problem's not getting resolved then the last resort would be your reset button now reset button is going to remove all your configuration or all your settings from your gateway device is going to remove the password and everything it's going to open up your, your ssid for everybody to connect to in your neighborhood um so you want to make sure once you reset and your broadband gateway comes back online you want to make sure to secure it and put a password on it um and go you know revert back to your settings 
Now there's a way to save the configuration before you reset it. So that way you could um, reload the old configuration. So you don't have to do it manually. But I would suggest not, suggest not doing that because whatever the problem you're trying to resolve may come back as well if you if you go that route because you're reloading it from old configuration. So once you reset it, you know, just make sure that you are, you know, pressing the reset button for less than 10 seconds. The standard reboot takes like, you know, depends, um, but normally like maybe like 30, 40 seconds, I think it takes for a reboot. And then the service LED on the front panel will respond immediately and the lights red red flash within 10 seconds of reset button being pressed. The service LED will lights fast flash red during button is still being pressed and turns steady white once the reset button releases in 10 seconds. If the reset button is held for more than 10 seconds, it'll go to the factory reset. So factory reset is what you want to try to avoid because factory will pretty much take everything back to the default settings. Um, but I mean, that's another option. I mean, at that point, you might as well do the factory settings. So if the reset button is held for more than 10 seconds, it's going to do the factory settings, which is factory reset, which is fine. Um, so if you just press a reset button, um, it's just going to do a soft reset where it's not going to remove your configuration. But if you do a, a more longer than 10 seconds, it's going to remove all your configuration and put it back in default mode. Now, if the button's held for 10 seconds, the service LED will start to blink white flash. WPS LED will start to blink green flash. And if the reset button is held more than 15 seconds, the service LED will turn steady white and WPS LED will be turned off and start to factory reset, which is awesome. I mean, I'm glad, you know, they do provide you some back roads to be able to fix your gateways if nothing works. Um, now, there is a warning here. It says resetting the BGW320 gateway to factory defaults will require all configured settings to be reconfigured. And that's exactly what I was mentioning to you guys. But yeah, I mean, I'll share this document with you guys. I think this is a great guide. There's a lot of people having issues with this device. So uh, hopefully this video helps. If it does, please subscribe, um, you know, give it a thumbs up, like the video and, um, you know, tell your family, friends about it. And uh, till next time, see you guys later. Bye.